Hello everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome to another railway video, or should I say welcome to the service table. Um, this is a remake, if you like, of an old video I made about how to convert uh, trying or trying Hornby Locos to DCC. Uh, and I did make a video a long time ago, as I said, but I don't think I was very concise and I don't think I made an awful lot of sense. So I thought I would remake that video uh, in a way that is very explicit and it should make sense to anybody. Now you don't need any prior skills um, to follow this video except for soldering, uh, and if you don't have a soldering iron, you do need a decent one, but you can get one, you know, reasonably cheaply um, if you're just going to do the odd little job like this. So don't be put off by soldering. If you don't know how to solder, um, my friend John from Chams123 uh, has an excellent, a really very good guide on how to solder on his channel, which is Chams123. And you can see that and be soldering very quickly. Other than that, this video is going to assume you have no prior knowledge about these locomotives. Uh, so some of the things I say might seem pretty obvious to you if you do know more about these locos. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you do know what I'm talking about and, you know, you know it all, feel free to skip ahead. Um, but, you know, generally that's good. And if what I'm saying doesn't seem too obvious, uh, then don't worry because hopefully it should all be pretty obvious. Um, by the time we're done. Uh, so this video is going to be based around the Hornby decoder, uh, but it should work um, for most others. Uh, so I'm going to start off then, um, going straight back to the beginning, uh, I'm going to talk about how these locos work, more specifically um, how the power from the left and right wheels um, passes through to the motors, left and right terminals. Um, so if you know about this already, this is one of those uh, examples uh, where you might already understand how this works, uh, then good, that should help you to understand exactly what has to happen. Uh, if not, uh, stay tuned, I'm going to show you exactly what happens. Uh, so I'm going to take um, the motor out, um, which you can do, and uh, you can see here's the left and right terminal uh, of the motor, and below it's pretty obvious that these are the left and right wheels. Now we'll start with the left side first because that's quite simple. If you look on your locomotive on the bottom, you can see a set of pickups uh, that look like this, or they might look a bit little different, but essentially pieces of brass uh, which touch the wheels, making contact with them. Now let's show that in a little more detail here then. So there's the wheels out, uh, the left side, and you'll notice that there's a little wire that goes all the way from there um, to this side of the motor, um, to that little copper plate that you can see there. And that's all that side is, simply straight from the wheels, straight to the motor. Perfect contact, no problem at all. Now the right side is a little more complicated because if you look at your loco, you'll probably notice that there's no pickups whatsoever, there's simply nothing. And the reason for that is as follows. Let's take these wheels out. Now, on the right side, the wheels have absolutely no insulation from their axles. So effectively, the axles are live with the right rail. And the way this works is the chassis of these locos are actually conductive. And this works on the assumption uh, that the chassis always has to be in contact with these axles, uh, which makes a pretty good electrical contact. Alright, well that makes sense. So how does the motor um, come into this? Well, if we take a look at this image here, this is a very close-up um, image of the motor, and you can see here this is the base of the motor, and you can see it's screwed straight into the chassis, uh, but that doesn't really answer the question. So if you follow this, um, it goes up to here, which is the spring, uh, and you can see this uh, screw here holds the spring in, so there's electrical contact there, and then you follow the spring all the way down, you can see the brush right there. Uh, which is connected straight to it. Uh, so that's how the contact works on the right side. And so I've drawn in a little wire here. Of course, I've just explained that it isn't uh, a literal wire, uh, but rather through the chassis, through this screw here, actually, you can see it, um, to the motor. Um, so that's how that works. Now, the uh, now, if you think about it, that is going to cause a bit of a problem later on because, of course, we need to interrupt these connections with the DCC chip. Uh, so that's what we're going to come into now then. So you can forget about these wires and things. You can get those out of the way because you need something, uh, you know, we need to make some changes there. Um, and this is where the soldering skills come in and such. Anyway, so this is what the DCC chip looks like. Uh, this is the Hornby one. As you can see, there's an awful lot of wires on there. Um, some of them we need, some of them we don't. And there's also this plug. Now, if your loco is DCC ready, you will need this plug. You can just plug it in. But obviously, these trying locos do not have those sockets, so you don't need it. So I tend to just chop that off first thing. 
Uh, now, a point that I will make is these wires, if you can see them here, um, they are soldered quite delicately onto the chip. And if you tug them, um, they are probably going to come out because they are made quite cheaply. You know, let's not beat about the bush. Um, so what I try and do is I just put a little bit of insulating tape around these wires um, to keep them in place, so that if you do tug them, it's not going to you know cause a lot of damage. Uh, so you just need to bunch them together somehow. A cable tie is probably a little big. If you've got a little cable tie, that would work. But just something to keep the wires together. Uh, but obviously, like I said, we're not going to use all of these wires, so it might be best to do that after that. Um, so onto that then. Oh yes, I'm just going to use this little black box to represent the chip uh, because it's a little easier to <laughs> look at than that. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm going to represent as the chip. Okay, so to work out what needs to go where then, you need to look at the connection specifications. Now this will be found on every instruction manual that comes with the DCC decoders. Uh, you need to unfold it and it's a real big uh, lengthy document. Uh, but all you really need is this connection specifications and it actually uh, tells you the description of the functions um, with the with the colors of the wires which is all we need so the ones we are interested in is orange of course that is motor right uh, and I've added a <laughs> clumsy orange wire to that decoder so we need the orange one the black one we need um, which is left rail as you can see there so we need the black oops those two have popped up together uh, and we also need grey for motor left, grey right there, and red for the right rail, red right there. Now if you just want your loco to drive forwards and backwards without any sound or lights or anything like that, then they're the only ones you need. If you want to add a light, for example if you want to add a rear light, uh, which is function 2, you would need to keep the yellow cable as well as the common. Now the common um, returns to the decoder from all of these functions so you need the common if you're going to add any extra functions if you're just going to drive the loco forwards and backwards without any lights or any other functions all you need is these four cables so on the decoder you can snip the rest of those wires off if you're positive you're not going to need them and then you can tape around here um, just to make sure it's all nice and snug so that's all we need uh, so this is where the wires would go. I've just uh, illustrated it for you. I'll talk about some of them in a little more detail. So orange motor right, it's right here. So as you can see, that goes straight to the right side of the motor. Now this needs a little more thought to it, which I'll talk about at the end. Uh, but that's essentially what has to happen. So the black then, left rail, this is the black wire. Uh, that goes straight to the pickup, as we talked about before. Uh, so the pickup has its own wire, obviously, that comes up. You can see it here, actually, which comes up through the through the chassis. You can actually solder that wire straight to the black wire on the decoder, and that will work perfectly all right. Now, the grey wire needs to go to the motor left. Let's bring that one up. There it is. So the grey wire goes to where this wire, this grey wire here, in this case, used to go. So the little brass thing on the brush, uh, that's what you can solder to. Or you can solder straight to the brush if you want. Uh, that's entirely your choice. So that's where the grey cable goes, to the motor left. And the last one, of course, is red, right rail. Uh, now I've shown that as there, um, but as I said before, the chassis is all live with the right rail, so it doesn't really matter where you put it, but I have got a couple of tips. Um, as you can see, this is the uh, motor, of course, um, screwed into the chassis. Now a nice place you could take that wire and solder it is here, because there is often an eyelet um, around this screw, um, which has a couple of cables soldered onto it already. So you could take that signal from there, uh, if you haven't got the luxury of that, or if the cables don't reach, you could also solder it here, around this area. Although be careful, because you might want to take the, the uh, spring out one day. Uh, so yeah, um, another thing to point out then, is as you can see, there's an insulator here on the, on the left side. We call it the left side. Uh, if we look here, this is the insulator here. You'll notice there isn't one here, for obvious reasons because when we're running DC we don't need that um, insulation we actually need this to conduct but of course to run it DCC you need to insulate that um, otherwise you're just not going to be going through the decoder you're going to be going straight down this uh, spring straight into the chassis and straight to the rail so you've got to insulate that so it goes through the chip instead now I wouldn't recommend buying one of these uh, insulators um, because the original ones are quite expensive now and people charge too much for them but what you can do is you can just get a little heat shrink tubing or something like that, um, anything uh, that you can use um, to uh, to insulate. Um, you could, at a push, even use a bit of insulating tape and just wrap it round there. Uh, but the point is you don't want this brush here to connect electrically with this spring. 
Um, otherwise, that's going to cause you problems. Uh, but other than that, that should just about wrap things up. Um, that's all you need to do to DCC chip a locomotive. One more thing to point out, of course, if you look at this decoder, all the components are exposed onto it, and obviously if they make contact with any part of this chassis uh, while the decoder is trying to run, uh, it is going to short out and cause some nasty problems, obviously because it's going straight to the right rail. So when you're placing the decoder inside the loco, uh, wherever you choose to put it, wherever the wires will reach, um, you need to make sure um, that it isn't going to touch the chassis. Um, so you can put it in its little insulating sleeve, I believe they do come with sleeves, um, but if not you can just use a sticky pad, that's what I do, uh, stick a sticky pad somewhere on the loco where the, wi where the wires are going to reach and uh, then it's perfectly isolated from the chassis uh, and that makes things safe and it isn't going to short out. Uh, but yeah, that should just about do it, so uh, that's uh, an idiot's guide to converting Triang or Triang Hornby Locos to DCC. Um, it is quite a simple process, but when there's so many wires and so many different things to consider, it, it is a little complicated, but I hope I've put things into as you know, simpler terms as possible here. Uh, that's all you need to do, it's just those four cables. Of course these are a little bit messy, but you can make things look as tidy as you want to uh, on your job. I've done it a couple of times now, it does work very well. Uh, of course you do need to make sure that the loco you're running is going to be on the correct sort of track. If you run one of these very old trying locos um, on modern track, it's going to be bouncing around all over and the connection isn't going to be very good. It's going to keep cutting out on you. Uh, so make sure you're using the correct track, or the correct wheels for the correct track I should say, and it should all work very well for you. So, any questions at all, just let me know in the comments, and I'll be glad to talk to you about them. Of course, this has been very theoretical, um, you're going to have to give things a try in practice, but hopefully now you understand exactly what has to happen in order for the DCC chip to operate in one of these older locos. Alright, I'll stop blubbering on now then, so thank you very much for watching if you're still here, and uh, I'll see you next time with some more running on the railway. Alright, cheers everybody, see you soon.